Yes, Indiana Jones and the Disney Delusion is a flop. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Access Media and Shield Media cope around this movie. And the Mary Sue is certainly one of those shill sites that is being dosed with copium right now. It's complicated to call Indiana Jones and the Dial of Duh a flop. Actually, no, it's, it's really not that difficult. Indiana Jones is a cinematic institution. Can you imagine if Star Wars, of all franchises, back in 2015, only brought in 7.2 million its preview night? That would be scandalous. And yes, there was a lot of brand damage to Indiana Jones because of the Crystal Skull movie. But Lucasfilm hasn't exactly helped matters with the damage that has been done to the previous Lucasfilm franchises such as Star Wars and Willow. Adjusted for inflation, even Crystal Skull broke a billion dollars. This movie won't. But this is Indiana Jones, and it should have at least had the opening numbers for the Crystal Skull, but it didn't. And to highlight some of the failures of Lucasfilm and Disney, just look at the Star Wars sequel movies. And yes, I know all three films broke a billion dollars, but it trended downwards. Let me show you. When The Force Awakens came out, it made two billion dollars, which is a pretty respectable haul. But each movie after that made significantly less money. The Last Jedi, $1.3 billion. That's 700 million less than the previous movie. And The Rise of Skywalker, 1 billion. That is 1 billion less than the first one. Those numbers should be going up, not down. That's not good. You can't call that a success when you are making less money with your sequel movies. And sure, all three movies broke a billion, but honestly, The Last Jedi? That should have been a three billion movie. And The Rise of Skywalker? Four. And this is provided that Disney actually did things right, which clearly they didn't. And it's really no different here than with Indiana Jones. And yes, I get it. Crystal Skull caused a lot of damage to Indiana Jones. But let's be honest here. Disney didn't fucking help. Like I said in my previous video, audiences are wising up to the bullshit of Hollywood. And one of the things I find so strange about all this is that the numbers from Monday and Tuesday have not been posted yet onto the numbers.com. It makes me wonder. Even though we have articles saying that it made 11.8 million on Monday, but for whatever reason, they are not being reported. It's like they're trying to obfuscate the failure of this movie or something, but that's just my speculation. And like I said, I find all this kind of odd because the numbers is usually kept up to date. Sunday, we had the Sunday numbers before the day was even done, but we don't have Monday or Tuesday yet. And currently, as I'm recording this video, it's Wednesday. And yes, I understand there can be a rational explanation for this. I just don't have one. But honestly, that's besides the point. But the one thing that the article does bring up is that both Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Thor Love and Thunder both made 11 million on the first Monday. Both films, in my opinion, were atrocious. And the one thing that the article leaves out is the fact that both those movies did way better its opening weekend. Wakanda Forever did 181 million. Thor Love and Thunder did 144 million. Indy 5 did 60, which is gonna be more than half compared to those two other movies. And that's really bad. So saying that both those films, because they made 11 million, means that Indy is gonna be a success is not true. And yes, I will give you that 11 million on a Monday is certainly an improvement, but it doesn't mean it's going to be a financial success, let alone breaking even. And this is the reason why I talk about the shill media and their cope. Rachel Leshman wants to compare this movie to 2018's Mission Impossible Fallout. I hate to break this to you, Rachel, but Mission Impossible is not Indiana Jones. It's not going to bring Indiana Jones money like it did with Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones is a cultural institution Mission Impossible is not. In comparison, Dial of Destiny made about what Mission Impossible Fallout made its opening weekend pre-pandemic. But Mission Impossible, when it left theaters, brought in 786 million, which is very respectable for this movie. But this is not Indiana Jones. 
And when it is all said and done compared to the budget of the film and multiplying it by three, it definitely made a profit. It didn't just break even. Like I said previously, Indiana Jones is a cultural institution. Mission Impossible is not. But when you go and compare the Mission Impossible films, all of them, with the exception of Rogue Nation, made more money than the previous one. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Dead Reckoning is going to make a shitload of money, mainly because of the goodwill that Tom Cruise has built up because of Maverick. That movie brought in a billion dollars, and I don't see why this movie wouldn't either. Tom Cruise, as crazy as he is, knows how to play to the audience and give them what they want, where Disney has no fucking clue. And God forbid I actually agree with the Mary Sue on something. Mark that one in your calendars. But this movie costs way too much money, and that's kind of the problem with movies in general these days. 300 million is way too much money to spend on a film. And then potentially this movie costs as much as 327 million. That's a lot of money for a movie to flop on. A lot of people, when they see the box office numbers and it goes over the budget, they immediately assume that the movie either made money or broke even, which is completely not the case. What is typically not taken into consideration is things like the marketing, loans that were taken out to fund the film, any kind of reshoots that happened, because that is not a part of the initial budget. And on top of that, you also have the theater's take. And I'm not sure where it falls. I've heard it's like anywhere from 50% to 20%. And that is the reason why the break even point is typically three times the cost of the movie. And that means that this movie needs to hit roughly a billion just to break even. That's not turning a profit. And just because a movie broke even doesn't make it a success. It is a success when it makes more money. Studios are not in business to break even. That is the road to bankruptcy. They make movies to turn a profit because a studio is a business like any other business. So one of the things I think is kind of funny is if you go to Deadline and you search for Indiana Jones, you get this right here where it says Dial of Destiny sequel tanks with 82 million five day priceless. On the bright side for Independence Day bomb Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, its first five days at the box office of 82 million aren't as bad as Paramount slash Sundance's Terminator Gynesis. Ooh, that's got sting. And this just goes to show you with these films, you simply just can't go home again. Maybe you'll get lucky with something like Top Gun Maverick, but those are few and far between. And like I said, God forbid I actually agree with the Mary Sue on something, but movies simply cost too much money to make these days. And I think going forward, movies are going to continue to struggle because of these inflated budgets. If they go and bring things down to like 60 to 80 million, you're more likely to turn a profit with your film. 60 million means you only have 180 million just to break even and everything after that is going to be pure profit, which is what you want. And on top of that, when you put limitations on a film, the filmmaker is more likely to be more creative and you will get a better story as a result of that. With these inflated budgets, it just means that people can be lazy when it comes to creating a film and relying on fixing everything in post, which is what you should never say when making a film. Sisu is an example of a film that was cheap to make, only 6 million euros, and it brought in twice that in American dollars. And I can't say whether the film actually broke even or not, but it was a damn good film, and if you haven't seen it, you need to. It certainly deserves your money. Certainly more so than the crap that's been coming out of Hollywood. And I'll close out this video just like how I opened it. Yes, Indiana Jones 5 is a flop and there's going to be a lot of cope going around, specifically coming from Disney. Anyway, folks, that's my take. I'm curious what yours is as well. So go and leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, I suggest you go and check out another one of mine, which you should be seeing popping up right about here. And I'll catch you next time.